For the JavaScript problem we will cover in this tutorial, let's assume you are working on an application and its initial state is established by an object. As the application is used, the state changes and so does the object. However, you would like the ability to set it back to the original state. In order to do that, you need a copy or clone of that original object. We're going to look at how to best make that clone in JavaScript. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. Last week as part of the YouTube video, I included a poll of what JavaScript topics were of most interest. If you'd like to submit your preference and haven't done so yet, I'll include a link to that tutorial in the description. Now, so far, the top topic is JavaScript problems. Now, the problem we are going to work with in this tutorial is something I deal with now and again with the work I do in creating online courses. I will have an object that sets the course up. It establishes everything about the course as all of the settings and whatnot. As the user interacts with the course, the objects, properties, etc., change. But there are times when I want to give the user the option to return to the original state, the state the course was in when they first started. To do this, I need a clone of that original object. So let's look at how we can copy objects in JavaScript and why it is not as simple as using the assignment operator. Now here is a sample object which I could use for this type of problem. It's establishing certain things about an online course. That's what it's doing. So I have all the settings in here and they're all listed as properties. One of those properties happens to be an array to keep track of the pages that are visited. So let's first try to make a copy of this object using the assignment operator. So we'll do original obj is what we'll call it and we'll set that equal to start obj. So we're simply trying to copy this one up here. Save that. Let's go ahead and take a look at see how that works. So I'll refresh this and open the console and let's take a look at start obj first. We open that up. You can see all the settings there. It looks good. Ridge obj. That looks good as well. Everything looks the same. All right, so no problem there. So why can we not use this for cloning an object, for cop making a copy of an object? Well, let me show you where the problem occurs. Let's say that a change is now made to our starting object. So start OBJ. Let's just change question answered, the number of questions answered, and set that to one now. Whoops. Like that. Let's go ahead and save that. And we'll refresh. Now let's take a look at start OBJ. And you can see question answered equals one. Now, the original OBJ shouldn't show that, right? However, it does. It shows the same thing that start OBJ does. Why does that happen? Well, when you use the assignment operator, you are really assigning a reference to the object. And, and so now you have two variables that reference the same object. So when the object changes, whether you're looking at start OBJ or orig OBJ, you're going to see the same thing. So that's why we can't use the assignment operator to do a clone of an object or to copy an object in JavaScript. So let's look at another way to approach this. Now there is an assign method on the JavaScript object that we can use to do what is called a shallow copy. And it will work for this particular object. So let's look at that first. So now, in order to make a copy of the object, I'm going to do object.assign. And the way object.assign works is I reference an object I want to copy things into. In this case, I'm going to make it a blank object because I want to create a copy. And then I put start obj here. Now, what object.assign is going to do 
is it will copy all of the enumerable and owned properties of this object and place them into this object. Now, there are a number of ways you can set up properties in objects, and I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial, but if you're interested in that, we dive into that in a lot of detail in my advanced course, and I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in that. All right, let's see how this works. We've got a copy being made using object.assign, and then we're changing question answer on start obj. And let's see if it remains the way it should as the original object in orig obj. So we'll save that, jump out, refresh. Let's take a look at start obj first. And we can see that question ants is equal to one now. Now let's take a look at orig obj. And sure enough, question ants is still equal to the original value that was assigned to that object. So that, that's working for us. Now where object.assign, where it falters is if we have objects inside of objects. So let me do that. Let me add some additional information to this object I've set up. I'm going to add another object to it right after completed here. And this is just a list of questions and their individual results for each question. So it's an object inside an object and then it also has objects inside of that for each question. So let's go ahead and save that and well let's do one more thing. Let's make a change to one of those child objects. So start obj dot question results. Dot q1 will change the first question. Attempt and we'll change the attempt and set that equal to true. All right. So we'll save that. Let's go ahead and refresh and let's take a look at start obj. And we'll open that up and then we'll open up the question results. And now in here inside of question one, we can see the attempt is equal to true and it's equal to false in Q2. So it did change it for start obj. Now let's see if orig obj stayed like it was supposed to. We open up question results and notice attempt is equal to true here. So why did that happen with object.assign? Why did the original object not stay with all of the original parameters? The reason is object.assign when it encounters child objects, it will copy them by reference. The same thing as happens with the assignment operator. So it does a shallow, what we call a shallow copy. And so it wouldn't work in this type of situation. So is there another way to deal with this? Well, you can create a very complex function to deal with this, but I prefer to keep things simple. And I've mentioned this in previous tutorials, but I, but a great solution is using the json.parse and json.stringify to convert an object to a string and then convert it back to an object. And that allows us to clone it. And that does a deep copy as well. It copies the child objects inside of that object. So it works better than object.assign. Now, one of the limitations of this is that the object must be JSON safe, meaning that everything in the object can re be represented in JSON. But that's usually not a problem. That's usually not difficult, but you just need to be aware of that. So now let's change this again and let's use that JSON method. So first we want to convert the object to a string. So we can do that with JSON.stringify and then we pass in the object, start obj. Now that will turn it into a string. Now we want to turn it back into an object. And so we put those results inside of the json.parse method to convert it back into an object. So we do it like this. Put my closing paren down here. And so we convert it to a string 
and pass that string to json.parse that converts it back to an object and therefore we have a cloned object and we reference that with the orig obj variable okay so let's see how that works for us now we're going to change this and we're going to change this and see if orig obj stays the same and start obj changes so we'll save this let me jump out refresh let's take a look at start obj first we see the one change question answer now if we go into question results inside of q1 we see the attempt equals true so that was changed now let's take a look at orig obj question answer is still zero so that didn't change we go into question results those are still the original value as well so that works well for us that way and that's the method i use when i'm dealing with this with this particular problem when i need to have that original object to restore a state to an online course now hopefully that was helpful to you before we're done here please hit the like button it can help others find this tutorial if you want to dive deeply into javascript i've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section so you can check them out there and if you haven't subscribed yet hit that button or click the circle link on the left the one with my face i release a new tutorial each week you can also click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website all things javascript dot com for a complete list of tutorials and other resources thanks for watching